Hi, Dr. Mori with a packing list for the Uncivilized Vitality Emergency Camp. So we don't go on survival camps, but we do emergency camps. You're out in the woods, you get lost, uh, an emergency comes up. And instead of having that romantic notion of uh, being a survivalist, we're going to treat this with uh, the um, proper, proper respect that an emergency in the woods um, would incur. So there's going to be a certain amount of gear you're allowed to take and then a bunch of other gear you're not allowed to take. So this would be like the bare minimum. This is stuff you should have with you anytime you go in the woods on a day hike anyway. Not just a, an eight inch knife on your belt and the idea you're going to make a bow drill and live in a, you know, cut down a half a forest to make a wiki up or a lean to. So we're going to go through the, the packing list. It'll be in the description below. And then these are the things you'll need to go on the um, Uncivilized Vitality Emergency Camp. Get your emergency bead uh, or your pace bead. One of the things is this this year coming up, this next season, 2024, we're going to do two night emergency camps. So uh, we'll explain about that. And you will be, yes, you will be allowed to wear shoes this year. Um, barefoot emergency camps in the past, there's always a couple injuries that take up a lot of time. Now our support person will be with us uh, taking pictures. They will be carrying uh, headlamps and uh, trauma bags and um, things to prevent hypothermia and some extra food and water. So don't worry about that. So let's go through the gear. You will be required or allowed to take. You will be able to take two standard size morigamis. I'm just going to take a uh, cotton shemog and then of course I have my um, silk neckerchief with me. You will be allowed one wool blanket or a patu. Okay. Those will be your start of your clothing elements. You will be allowed two 55 gallon drum liners or garbage bags and you will be allowed a hat. Okay, those things are important. That's our cover element. You will also be taking uh, one container, a stainless steel uh, thermos with which we can purify water. Um, you will need some sort of cutting tool. Your knife must be no more than three inches in cutting length. The uncivilized ADC knife is a great option for this. Uh, it's very robust. It'll, it'll take care of most of the tasks we need. Folding knife is also fine. Uh, your signal multi-tool is a great choice, but you're going to want a pretty robust uh, cutting tool. It has to be under three inches. You'll need a cutting tool. You will need a way to start fire. You are not going to be bringing a lighter or a giant ferro rod. You will be allowed a ferro rod that is less than three inches. So it has to be one of the small ferro rods. I just have this fire necklace. You can carry a, a ferrocerium rod. Uh, the small ones, of course, we have those uh, available uh, for fire starting. And no tinder. We're going to do just natural tinder. So your tinder kit has to stay home, just a ferrocerium rod. And you will be allowed or given or required one signal whistle. Okay, So that's going to be there. As far as cordage goes, you'll be allowed a pocket hank of paracord up to 12 feet. And this year, because we have some other things that I'm planning on showing you uh, at the course, you will be allowed one fast rope. So each of those are... 12 feet in length. Your pocket cord could be a uh, number 36 bank line. You could bring 12 feet of micro cord, but it doesn't break down as much, so I'd suggest the paracord. And because we'll be out for two days, you will be allowed one gallon size Ziploc bag with some snacks and some food in it. Okay. And then you can have a, a small backpack or a, like a kid's school bag or something to carry it in, or you can roll the stuff up in your blanket. The only other thing you'll be allowed that I don't have here is a um, Ziploc bag with one small hand sanitizer and some wipes or toilet paper. Uh, and then of course any medications personally required or, or anything, uh, insulin or anything that's specific to each person will be transported by our support staff, our support person, so they have that. The rest of us are just going to survive the um, experience with just uh, what we have. So we're getting into a simulated, simulated emergencies. Last year's event, um, we duct tape um, an oven mitt onto someone's hand to simulate a, an injury where you couldn't use your hand. It's harder to start a fire when you've got only one hand. Uh, we had somebody with a splint. We had one person with an eye injury and had to wear a blindfold and rely on the others. So we get out there, we'll draw lots, you'll get your emergency, and then we'll start practicing what you would do. Most of it would have to do with signaling, but your gear, you get two morigamis, you get a blanket, you get a garbage bag, you get one small cutting implement, one small fire starter and a whistle, one container, two pieces of cordage, a hat, and a little bit of food. Throw that all in the bag and you're ready for our emergency camp. 
Um, it's going to be great. I'm not sure what the dates are yet, but check that out, and this will be your packing list. So uh, if you've been on a camp emergency uh, campaign with us before, leave comments below what you liked and didn't like about it. Probably everybody likes the shoes now. And uh, just the clothing that you're wearing, usually shorts and a short uh, button-up shirt with a t-shirt. That way we can layer up at night. Um, that's it. So like and subscribe and look forward to seeing you at emergency camp.